Hello, and thank you so much for stopping by my poster. My name is Korak Chakraborty. I'm a junior year here at the University of Utah, majoring in biology with a cellular molecular emphasis and minoring in chemistry. Today, I would like to present on a CRISPR-based high-throughput gene knockout platform for in vivo functional genetic screens. Ever since its discovery back in 2012, CRISPR-Cas9 has significantly simplified our ability to knock out genes in a target genome. However, large-scale CRISPR-based screens in vivo haven't been quite feasible yet, and the reason is due to the difficulty of working with and keeping track of thousands of guide RNA molecules. To tackle this issue, I have been working with Dr. Randall Peterson and Dr. Sabap Harvis in the Peterson Lab, and we have developed a novel platform with the potential for genome-scale functional genetic screens in zebrafish. Our platform combines droplet microfluidics, single-needle microinjection, and barcoded DNA tags. Figure 1 over here shows a schematic of our novel platform. We are currently in the proof-of-concept stages for this project, and to demonstrate the proof-of-concept, we chose three different genes to knock out in zebrafish that are known to have a strong phenotype, namely the TYR gene that codes for tyrosinase, the enzyme responsible for melanin formation and therefore pigmentation, the TNNT2A gene that codes for a cardiac troponin protein responsible for heart contraction, and the CHRD gene that codes for cordon, which plays an important role in embryonic development. Now, the first step in this platform is to synthesize gene-specific guide RNAs and DNA barcode tags. Now, what do I mean by DNA barcode? Basically, it's a piece of DNA with a known sequence and is unique to a particular gene. For our proof of concept, we generated three sets of guide RNAs for the TYR, TNNT2A and CHRD genes by in vitro transcription, and then generated three sets of DNA barcode tags for the three genes by modifying the template DNAs used to in vitro transcribe the guide RNAs. The next step in the platform is to generate nanoliter droplets, each containing one guide RNA targeting its corresponding target gene, the corresponding DNA barcode, and the Cas9 enzyme. We generated nanoliter dro size droplets by loading a mix of our guide RNAs, DNA barcodes, and Cas9 enzyme on a microfluidics device. And figure 2b over here shows these generated droplets. It is important to maintain the uniformity of these droplets for consistency of injections and to prevent the embryos from dying due to a high injection volume. After the droplets have been generated, they are now pooled together to form a library of droplets. Figure 2c over here shows a cartoon depiction of such a library of droplets in an injection needle. An important point to note here is that these droplets are generated in such a way that they do not coalesce with each other and exist as discrete entities. This is vital for the functionality of the platform. The next step in the platform is the injections of the zebrafish embryos, and figure 2D over here depicts that. One droplet is injected per embryo at the single cell stage by single needle microinjection. For our proof of concept, we injected around 100 embryos with a library of droplets for our three target genes. After about 96 hours post-fertilization, the larvae are visually screened for their phenotypes. These phenotypically altered larvae are then separated, lysed, and PCR amplified to recover the DNA barcodes. Figure 3a shows the knockout phenotypes of these screened larvae for our three genes, and figure 3b shows the proportions of the different phenotypes observed. We see about 30% of embryos, each with the TYR gene and TNNT2A gene knockout phenotypes, which is pretty close to the expected proportion of 33%, but we see only about 20% of embryos with the CHRD gene knockout phenotype. And this makes sense because the CHRD gene has a lower knockout efficiency than TYR and TNNT2A. We also see a very small proportion, about 5% of embryos, showing a mixed phenotype. And this could have been 
due to occasional accidental injections of two droplets into an embryo, which caused both the genes to be knocked out. However, the fact that this proportion is very low is a positive result and signifies that most of our injections were successful with one droplet injected per embryo. We also see about 8% of embryos with no abnormal phenotype or the wild type and about 10% of deformed embryos. Also, the recovered DNA barcodes from the lysed larva were sequenced and were found to match the barcode sequence for the target gene responsible for causing the altered phenotypes. Lastly, we tested the stability of the DNA barcode because the longer the barcode is stable for, the greater the variety of phenotypes we can screen for that appear in later stages of embryonic development. Figure 3C over here shows the gel electrophoresis results of the DNA barcodes at different time points, and as you can see, they remain quite stable all the way up to 96 hours post-fertilization. We look forward to testing the stability for longer time points. So, to conclude, we were able to successfully demonstrate proof of concept of our novel platform in zebrafish using the TYR, TNNT2A, and CHRD genes. Future directions of this project include performing the proof of concept using a greater number of target genes, testing the stability of the DNA barcodes at longer time points, and ultimately scaling it up to perform a whole genome scale functional genetic screen in zebrafish. Thank you very much.